Yes. So, um, first of all, Hart, I mean, we're, we're operating from a mission of decarbonizing and democratizing air travel. And we believe that the exciting thing about electrification, which I think is a recurring theme on your show, is that it is something that is not only emissions free, but in many cases can be commercially superior. Uh, essentially, you know, reducing, uh, going from um, internal combustion engines or, or jet engines to, to electric motors, you reduce part counts, you reduce mechanical complexity, all of these things that both drive, you know, uh, you know, lower acquisition costs, it drives lower maintenance, and, and that obviously becomes very exciting. So when we talk about the decarbonization and democratization of air travel, the decarbonization is, is fairly self-evident, but the democratization is about building an aircraft, a 30-seater aircraft, that can operate with really, really uh, fundamentally different uh, unit economics. So uh, what we set out to do with this is to create an aircraft um, that meets that value proposition. Um, today, there are not many 30-seaters flying around. Uh, there's one big exception, which is uh, Norway, where uh, sort of 30-seater aircraft is creates this fast, flexible way of getting around the country. It's the sort of backbone of the infrastructure where, where they fly point to point between small communities. And this used to be the case also in the United States. There used to be these small aircraft turboprops uh, uh, connecting air, aircraft uh, airports across America, but but they've been since gone out of service. And a large part of that is uh, that the unit economics of jet engines don't really add up for small planes flying short routes. So what we wanted to do is to bring that massive value proposition of electrification to this aerospace industry. Um, the thing that we, I think we've been working on to, to go back to your question for the past year and a half is to figure out a way how to meet that value proposition also, um, when we're with the introduction of a hybrid system. So essentially, the electric planes uh, or flying on batteries is, is great. Uh, you know, you meet the zero emissions, you meet the value proposition. But the problem is that about one in every thousand flights here in the U.S. gets uh, re re diverted. Essentially, you have an incident on the, on the airport where you're coming into. You have to fly over to a different airport. So that for that, you need about uh, 45 minutes of reserve fuel, and you need about, uh, on, on top of that, you need 100 nautical miles, which is 185 kilometers of reserves. So that, if you want to carry that with batteries, that's a long, that's a, that's a, lo a lot of reserves. Essentially, you're maybe doing a half an hour flight, and you're carrying 40, plus 45 minutes and pl plus uh, 185 kilometers. So it becomes really cannibalizing on the electric performance of the aircraft. But it's needed, right? Because uh, obviously this happens once in every thousand flights and the sort of safety criteria for aircraft is you, you can, you know, you want to have a safety record of, of less than one major incidence in a billion flight hours. So either you improve air traffic management by a factor one million or you create a provision uh, to deal with these reserve rules. Uh, so that's where a hybrid system comes in. So the trick, what you wanted to, to achieve, uh, or the objective that you want to achieve is, is to build a hybrid system that does, is not a, a large driver of development time. It's not a large driver of the, the cogs, the cost of the aircraft. Essentially, you don't want the whole economics of the aircraft to be defined by that one in a thousand, uh, one in a thousand occurrence. So uh, so we work long and hard on that. We've looked at various different architectures. And what we've landed on now is what we call the independent hybrid system. That means essentially that you're building two aircraft in one. You're building a turboprop aircraft and you're building an electric aircraft and they're operating on the same wing. Uh, so you have four propellers. Uh, the, the inner two propellers uh, are all electric. They're larger, they're larger diameter, and they're operating at a larger, higher voltage, or not higher voltage, higher power. Uh, and they fly all electrically, and, and the plane is able to fly uh, with those inner nacelles for the sort of 125 mile, 200 kilometers, um, all electric uh, proposition, so, so th these routes. 
And then you turn on, on the outer nacelle, you have a smaller turboprop engine, essentially um, the form factor of, of some of the most common small aircraft turboprop engines in the world uh, that you're not using. And then as you, as you employ those t turboprops, you, you can exceed, you can first of all deal with the re reserve rules. So you turn them on if there's any incident, or you could use them to fly longer flights, uh, up to 500 mile flights. Uh, this has been a departure from how we originally uh, viewed this, where we were essentially designing a series hybrid system with a range extender in the rear fuselage uh, operating as a, as a, as a generator. Um, and instead, we've gone to this more direct method.